Hey guys, having a little fun out here. I'm on a little one day camping adventure with my buddy John and his son and my two of my girls. And we're here at Graham's Cave State Park in the middle of Missouri, enjoying a, an unexpectedly clear evening. So we thought we'd throw the scopes up to do a quick little bit of viewing. Right now we're looking at a waxing gibbous, I guess, technically, because we're one day short of full moon. Tomorrow is full moon. We're having some beautiful, clear images of the moon tonight, and it is cooperating by posing nicely in between some trees. Forgive the shakiness. I am trying to hold this still and hold the moon in frame while using a big Dobsonian 8-inch aperture telescope from Explore Scientific, getting some great images from that through my Google Pixel 3 and my Go Sky universal smartphone mount. Having a lot of fun. I hope you guys are getting outside and enjoying this beautiful weather, especially on this time where everything is shut down and we can't get out to see much can't go out and see much but you can always go outside and look up and you don't need a big fancy telescope to do it just your eyes a smartphone app and if you have a decent pair of binoculars you can see some pretty amazing stuff so I encourage you guys all to go out and do that and enjoy the natural wonders and I'm gonna stop talking and I'm just gonna zoom in and out on some spots and I'm going to start with Tycho's Crater. I'm going to see if I can zoom in on that for you. Oh, yep, there it is. Nice and in frame. Now you see that, that crater there. Now, I want to remind you that we're looking at this through this telescope and all these images are inverted because I don't have a correct image uh, eyepiece or prism set up so that you can see everything as they would see. So if you were looking at the moon, you would actually see this with the naked eye would be on the southern hemisphere. Now, if you look closely, you're going to be able to see these little streaks or lines going away from it. And what those are, those are that is material that was ejected from the impact of that crater. What's neat about that is that that tells us that that's a relatively young crater. It is not one of the older craters on the moon because we can tell that because we can still see those lines of ejected material. In fact, some of the rock samples brought back from Apollo 17, which included a bunch of uh, glass fragments, are believed to have uh, come from the Tycho impact. Tycho is a pretty cool uh, crater because it's named for Tycho Brahe, which was a Danish astronomer who didn't even own a telescope, but he had an, an observatory where he built a grid at the top of a castle, and he used that to map and plot fixed position of stars. The reason that Tycho Brahe, one of the many reasons that Tycho Brahe is an important part of uh, astronomical history is that he was the mentor to one Johannes Kepler who went on to use the work that he did with Brahe to figure out that the planets indeed moved in elliptical orbits instead of circular orbits. And he also pinned the Kepler's laws of planetary motion, which those went on to do a good job of setting the stage for what Isaac Newton did with his laws of gravity and explaining how gravity related to the celestial bodies. And, 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 and most specifically, I think probably the most famous that we all would be uh, familiar with would be uh, Newton's law of universal gravitation. If you're not familiar with that, look it up. Forgive me, I'm, I'm playing with this, trying to bring this back into focus and keep it in frame at the same time while trying to give you a little bit of 
science and history at the same time. So I got a lot of balls in the air, but hopefully you are enjoying the video and enjoying the information. By all means, please look it up, uh, explore it a little bit more. Uh, while we're looking at this, you notice that there are some distinct patches of light and dark. The light parts really kind of represent the highland areas or what we might think of as mountainous regions. And then the dark areas are basaltic plains, which basalt is an extrusive igneous rock. So what we're really looking at here is giant lava plains of igneous rock. So that's pretty cool. And that, that also is one of those things that help us to understand volcanism on the moon and how the moon uh, formed and the, those geologic processes that kind of uh, led to the, the moon and how it formed and help us to understand how it possibly came to be our biggest and most famous satellite. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Again, I am running right now an 8-inch first light Dobsonian telescope from Explore Scientific and having a great time and grateful for this beautiful night and this wonderful equipment and enjoy. If you like this video, please take a minute to give us a like and a comment to let us know what other kinds of things and content you'd like to see. Clear skies.